everybody good morning okay so i'm not in the woods today i'm at the house actually <laughs> i'm having to fix a bunch of stuff that we've tore up the last few days uh it's been a week i tell you and uh, i've had to work over a little bit this week at my regular job so i haven't had the chance to get done what i was really wanting to get done uh but anyway i'm just gonna kind of run y'all through it some of the things i've already done some of what we got to do yet uh the log truck red had a left hand wheel seal leaking uh it had a little pitting around the spindle where the seal rode and we saw that whenever we'd done the brakes here a while back and we was hoping it would seal off but it didn't so what we wound up doing is pulling the wheel back off cleaning everything up and putting a stemco wheel seal in it's got a uh wire ring that goes around the spindle and that'll take care of that pitting so we put that stemco seal in and now it's ready to put gear oil back in it and i've got to actually move it because if y'all remember on the last video we've got that broke fork up there to deal with so that's one thing i'm going to do today uh like i say again i've got to get under there and put the oil back in it in the differential and then let it back down i want to give that rtv uh I want to give that RTV where I put it on the inside of that wire ring when I slipped it up on the shaft. I want to give that uh, RTV plenty of time to dry uh, just so that way we know everything is sealed up good. <clears throat> and I done that yesterday afternoon, so it's been, it's had over 12 hours to dry. So hopefully we'll be good on that. Uh, but once we get it filled up and get it turned around, because uh, my welder's over there on the other side of the log wagon, uh, once we get it turned around, I'll start working on that here in a few. Uh, let me show y'all my log wagon project I've been working on. And uh, all these ideas I got from my buddy Jeff Fergie over in Somerville, Tennessee. And Jeff, if you're watching, I really appreciate everything you've done for me, buddy. Uh, but I've got it set up just like Jeff's. Jeff does run a wood tongue. I've got a steel in mine. <laughs> and I've got, I've got to get double trees and stuff to go on it. Uh... So that's going to take just a little bit to, uh, I've got a buddy of mine making me some buckheads for my double tree and uh, whatnot, but I'll have that fixed up here before long. And uh, let's see, we've had to add some channel iron up on top and some cross haul chains and whatnot. And uh, the basic wagon I bought, uh, got it, actually Jeff got it for me and uh, bought it from him, but uh, I've had to do a little bit of work on it. Nothing real major, but this this will help us out on them long pulls for for sure. Uh, this is a real good tool to have around on the long drags anyway. So I've been working on it. Like I say, I've had to add these all these chains to it, and everything on this thing, y'all's got a purpose. It, it, it don't look like a lot, but there's a lot more to it than what meets the eye. So I just kind of want to show y'all around, show you a little bit of what I've been doing. And I about got it ready to go. Like I say, I'm just, I've got a blacksmith buddy that's building me some, uh, he's building me some buckheads for the double tree and uh, some stay chains. And then whenever I get that back, she'll be ready to roll, as far as I know. But uh, anyway, y'all stay tuned with me here and uh, we'll get some oil put back in red rear end. And then uh, maybe I'll let y'all tag along and we'll try to fix that, uh, that uh, fork on the loader okay so i'm laying down on the job here uh, i'm under the big truck under red and we're going to uh, take differential plug out and refill it full of oil i thought i'd take you all along real quickly for that uh also i'll show you right quick when your wheel seals are leaking it'll sling oil all over your brakes and you got to clean all that mess up but there's a right up under here there's a gap in your spindle i'll try to get y'all in there where you can see it it's uh right up there and when your wheel seal is leaking that's where to come out at but anyway uh the reason i'm doing this y'all the reason i'm taking y'all along taking y'all along with me is because i want y'all to see just what it is you know in the logging business and even logging with mules there's still a lot of repairs and stuff that has to be done so y'all hang out with me a second and uh, i've got the bucket here with the pump in it uh where we'll pump more gear oil back into the uh rear end and whenever we drained it on a differential there's three plugs there's one 
right here, one right here, and there's one right down here on the bottom. Now, if you want to drain it just low enough to get to the bearings and the wheel seals, if you pull this plug out and drain it out right there, it, you know, you can see it's below the axle uh, out there to the wheels, and it will drain all your oil out down to that level, which is what I did. So now we're going to refill it. So we're going to take out this top plug, and we're going to fill it until it runs out the top plug. And like I say, y'all, the first thing you got to do is get this plug out. Uh, there's another thing I want to tell y'all about right quick while we're here. Right up here on top of the axle, and I'll go ahead and show y'all. Right up there is a little old uh, vent, vent plug right there. And if that vent plug is stopped up for whatever reason, uh, it will cause your wheel seals to leak because as this oil gets hot in this rear end and you're driving down the road, you know, gears turning and whatnot, uh, it will build up some, some pressure and it will cause your wheel seals to leak. All right, so make sure the end of my pipe's clean here. All right, now we'll just stick our pipe right in there. Oh, me. All right, let's see. Kind of by myself, so y'all just sort of bear with me here. I'll show y'all how this pump deal how it works it's it's pretty neat it's just a little old pump i got it i believe i got this one at tractor supply but it pumps both directions it takes a little bit to get it get it primed up all right y'all we've got her filled up she's a running out So, I need to get the holes out without making too big of a mess. It probably would have been better to get a little catch pin put on it, but I forgot about it. So, whoop. Got to put it in the O-N position. I used to work with this old boy. We worked on helicopters together. We was trying to get him to pull the bolt out. And he didn't know which way to turn it. And one of the mechanics told him, so put it in the OFF position. I always thought that was funny. You do want to get them pretty tight because you don't want that thing. You don't want it leaking, that's for sure. Get me a rag, wipe my hands, and then I'm gonna wipe this off because I don't want I don't want to think I got a leak when I don't have a leak. So, and I'll check it again. I'll run it for just a little while, and check it again, and make sure make sure nothing's leaking. So y'all be patient with me. I'll get the truck turned around and get it up here by the welder. And uh, I'll get the truck turned around and get it up here by the welder and y'all can help me fix this uh, broke fork on here. All right, y'all. Uh, I'm back now with Red. Uh, we went and took it for a test drive. The wheel seal is holding so far. I guess we'll know more about it when we put a load on it. Uh, but I carried it for about a 20, 30 minute drive. Got it warmed up good and everything seems to be holding good. Now, I have got it up here at the barn, and I've got to fix this fork. Remember I told y'all last video we made about the fork breaking? And if y'all can look right in there, I've already beveled it. And uh, I've got these plates, this piece of angle and this plate on top welded on, just kind of tacked up to make sure that this thing stays straight. 
Uh, so what I'm gonna do first, and I use this piece of fence wire, it's one eighth inch wire, and stuck right in there in the middle to get us a little bit of gap. And uh, put a little bit of bevel on this side. So I'm gonna go in here and weld this up first. And uh, when I get this side welded up, then I can move this angle channel that's over here, I can move it over here. And hopefully that'll keep us straight. I mean, it ain't gotta be perfect, but hopefully it'll keep us, you know, kind of semi-straight. Uh, the world will look halfway right anyway. <laughs> uh, the other day I had to weld this up right in here, uh, right here in this corner. Let me get out of the sun there. I had to weld it up because because it was cracked. So, you know, these old side loaders, they take a beating. And uh, fortunately, it's been pretty good to me, but it needs a, needs a little love. So we're gonna try to fix her up here. Uh, but y'all bear with me. I'm gonna set y'all right over here on the log truck. Maybe where y'all can watch a little bit. I don't know how much you'll be able to see, but anyway, we'll get through it. Come here just a minute and I'll show you what I've done here. Okay, so there's my root pass on this side. And uh, we've got the gap filled in. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and try to get this side filled up. I've got my root pass in. I'll probably lay two stringers, one on each side. And that'll probably do us on this side. And then we'll uh, take that base plate off over here and move it over here that way to keep it from bowing because all this heat that I'm throwing to it with this welder is going to pull it a, a little bit I'm sure uh, so anyway at least that's my plan we'll see how it works out and y'all now look here <laughs> I don't profess to be no professional welder I just I'm a farm guy you know mechanic uh, and I just get by you know I've learned to weld over the years and it's uh i mean i enjoy doing it don't get me wrong i enjoy welding i do uh but i ain't the best at it i just kind of get by
bring y'all back over here and let y'all see it again. All right. So now we've got our two stringers in. And not too bad. I got a little undercut right there at the bottom I got to fill in. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and clean this side up. And then move the channel around. Now I'm going to get my tacks off this side. And get this angle channel moved to over here. And that should keep us straight when we start this big weld on this side. At least I'm hoping anyway. And if not, it'll be good enough for who it's for. And I don't know about y'all, but I like straight lines. I like stuff to be square and even and all that good stuff. Even whenever I'm cutting grass, I like to have straight lines in the yard. put my, my plate over here on this side and what that's gonna do is that's gonna keep it straight it's gonna hold it in position while we uh, weld up this big V on this side Okay, now, okay, now let me show y'all kind of what the deal is over here. All right, see how I've got that V'd out? I'm gonna clean it out with a wire wheel, and then we'll just, uh, we'll run a root pass in there. And after I get the root pass laid in, then we'll just start laying stringers until it works all the way out to the end. Now y'all, for some reason or other, uh, I got crossed up on my camera skills here and I forgot to turn the camera on to record to catch all the stringers that I laid in that V that I just showed you. What I'm doing here is, is I'm filling in the top and I believe I had already filled in the bottom also. But anyway, I said that to say this. <laughs> I did not get to capture uh, me welding up the big V on the loader fork. Uh, you do get to see the end product, thank goodness. Uh, but for some reason or another, I missed it on uh, showing y'all the part of me filling in this V. And I do apologize about that. I swear when Marcy and the kids ain't around, it seems like I just kind of lose track of everything. <laughs> uh, they keep me straight, y'all. y'all i got it i think uh i'm sure it ain't as good as factory 
as far as being straight uh but i did get it so anyway this little repair is done and uh right there's finished product had to put a little bit on the bottom here to kind of help fill in there was a little old grinder mark there i went ahead and filled it in uh but anyway i'm not doing this to brag about how good of a welder i am or how much i know i'm just doing it to show y'all that uh there's a lot more to mule logging than just mules and cutting trees and dragging trees you know it's keeping up the maintenance on these trucks and <clears throat> of course the log wagon and i mean y'all can see all my all my stuff drug out here in the yard and ain't got a barn to put it under to work on it so we have to do it out here in the yard and <laughs> well let's just say it's aggravating sometimes let me give y'all one more last look at this log wagon i'm pretty proud of it it took me a few weeks to get it to where i needed it but i think i about got it now now it'll just be exciting to be able to use it okay so i'm out here at the forge under the shed i've got the rings in there uh, that i told y'all about the other day that uh we broke so i've got them in the fire start getting them hot and basically when we get them out we're gonna bring them right over here to the anvil we've got this uh tool here made to where we can clamp one piece of it around and just wrap it around there and make a ring and then we've got to uh we've got to put our grab hooks back in the ring there's really nothing to it just takes a little time so let's check on these they're starting to get a little warm so let's move them around a little bit and get them get them where they need to be out of a piece of square stuff y'all and a piece of pipe to get my outside dimensions you know like i want i'm sure there's a better way of doing it but that's just the way i do it
I didn't weld these things very hard. I just kind of I kind of tacked them together and that didn't work out. got them a lot better than they was anyway I mean, it ain't perfect by no means but the time we get the slag off it'll be, be all right they'll be all right till they break again <laughs> and when they do we'll be back doing the same thing but that's all right i mean that's part of it but i just wanted to show y'all uh that there's more to it than just holding a pair of lines in your hands and driving a pair of mules or a pair of horses. You know, you got projects like this that need to be done. We've got broke stuff like in ring that's gotta be fixed. The log truck has to be worked on. Uh, the mules for the most part is the lowest maintenance part of the whole operation. You just gotta put shoes on them every six or eight weeks. Uh, and that, that in itself is a job. Now I ain't gonna lie. Any of y'all fairies watching, I'm on my hat is off to you because that is probably the hardest back breaking this work I've ever done is shoeing. Uh, it ain't my favorite job, but you know, we do it cause well, it's hard to get somebody to shoe when you want them to shoe. And it's hard to get somebody to shoe the way I like them to be shod too. So I just do it myself. Same way working on this truck, you know, I could have carried it somewhere and let somebody else do it. But the problem with that is, is it may be three or four weeks before they can even get to it. And I need a truck tomorrow the next day you know uh plus most of the time when i've hired out fab work or maintenance it always winds up me having to go back and redo it because something ain't exactly right and i mean if you're gonna go back and redo it you just will do it yourself the first time you know it's what mama always said if you want it done right do it yourself so here we are anyway uh i appreciate y'all hanging out with me for a little while and uh hopefully here and there too i'll have another video out for y'all and uh as always thank y'all for watching because if it wasn't for y'all i wouldn't have a channel so y'all take care and have a good one